Hello, so in this video I wanted to talk a little bit about how realistic are the Fallout games. Now I know what you're going to be saying, you're going to say, how are the Fallout games realistic? They're set in an alternative universe where there was a big nuclear war, there's lots of radioactive mutated animals. That's not realistic at all. Well, you'd be right in some aspects, but you'd be surprised at how many things in the Fallout games are actually based on real world events. Now, the actual timeline of the Fallout games is that the history of the Fallout universe is pretty much the same as ours up until around the 1950s or something like that, where semiconductors were never invented and, you know, lots of other technologies were invented, so basically the timeline's massively split off at that point. However, there are sort of three main aspects I want to focus on in this video. That's the radioactivity of the bombs, um, I also want to talk about the Voltec experiments and the radioactive quackery. So, they're the three main elements I'm going to talk about. So, with regards to the bombs, what I'm on about is things like, in the Fallout games, the bombs are actually sort of fairly different than what we have in reality. And that's because, the for in the Fallout games, it's basically most of the bombs are meant to be atomic bombs, not hydrogen bombs. And the idea is that, basically, although the technology to deliver bombs might have kept advancing, such as missiles and things like that, the actual bombs themselves didn't. Now, most of the bombs in the Fallout games tend to look like the plutonium-style Fat Man bombs that was the main, obviously, most famous one was dropped on Hiroshima. Um, sorry, dropped on Nagasaki. Hiroshima was little boy. Um, and then these bombs are used by the US for the next few years, sort of for testing purposes until improved bombs are actually developed. Now, what obviously has happened in the Fallout series is that these bombs you know, the hydrogen bomb essentially has never been invented, and while they might have found ways of scaling down the bombs, in theory all they've done is keep scaling up atomic bombs. So, the logic of a lot of the Fallout games is that basically all of the atomic stockpiles are lots and lots of World War II style um, Fat Man devices, or slightly larger Fat Man devices, not anything more serious. Now, the um, bomb in Megaton, which is obviously meant to be, I guess, a one megaton device, actually just looks like a scaled up Fat Man. Now, that's the only reference I've actually can remember in any of the Fallout games to a big high yield bomb. Most of the others, I uh, guess, you know, if you look at the size of the craters, um, are meant to be obviously regular kind of uh, Fat Man devices or atomic bombs. Now, in regards to radiation, one of the main sort of differences between Fallout and reality is that in real life from radiation, especially if there's air bursts, but obviously there's a bit more if you get ground bursts, the radiation from a nuclear bomb is gone within months, or the worst effects are gone within months. Whereas in the Fallout games, lots of them are set 100 years after the nuclear war and there's still big pockets of radiation in places. Now, that's one of the things that isn't realistic. However, you can bear in mind, depending on what was put in the bomb, the half-life of certain radioactive materials can be a lot longer or shorter than others. So it's perfectly possible in the Fallout universe that certain, you know, things are put inside the bombs which had a much longer half-life than other type of you know nuclear material so that's always one option that the atomic bombs used in the Fallout series had higher yields than what we'd have had in atomic bombs because they were some sort of boosted fission devices and that they were very dirty sort of radioactive devices a bit like what a dirty bomb would be or a um, salted cobalt bomb so in the Fallout universe most of the bombs actually produce far more radiation because of their design so, yeah, the radiation in Fallout isn't too far-fetched if you consider that everything went along an alternative timeline. Now, in the Fallout games, you have, like, the mini-nukes, which are the little Fat Man launcher um, devices. These are actually completely feasible. In real life, there was a weapon called the Davy Crockett, and it was around, I think, a 30 to 40 kilo kind of warhead shot from a recallless rifle. So a bit bigger than what the little Fat Man devices are in Fallout, the Fallout games, but regardless, it actually existed. Um, and I'll put a picture of it up in the video. It only had, I think, a detonation of about a 0.02 kT yield, or something like, you know, um, a 2 or 3 ton yield. However, the point was that, you know, you could get something that weighed about 30 kilos that had the yield of 2 tons of explosives and spread radiation everywhere. So yeah, crazily enough, something like the um, Fat Man device was totally real. Um, all the mini-nukes, it was called the Davy Crockett. So, in the Fallout series, there are all the vaults, which are basically the nuclear survival bunkers made for people to live in. However, all of them have sort of deep, dark secrets, and that they were done as basically human experiments to see what would happen if you put a load of people together, and then, you know, certain conditions were done to them. Now, this sounds really far-fetched, but it's actually not. Now, the, what I'm mostly going to talk about is Project MK Ultra. 
Now, 13 O'Clock Podcast, who I support on Patreon, you should subscribe to them if you haven't already. I've done an episode on MK Ultra, so I'm going to link to that in the description. So listen to all of that, because that's, I think, over an hour long, and you definitely get a lot of good information listening to that MK Ultra episode. However, basically, as well as MK Ultra, there were lots of psychological experiments conducted on people and sort of spin-off things of chemical weapons testing on sort of civilians and um, military personnel. So where you have the whole sort of vault tech of putting people in a vault and exposing them to some sort of chemical to see how they'd react. Uh, lots of stuff like this sadly really did happen. Um, if you read up on Project MK Ultra, and as I said I'm not going to go into huge details on it because it's quite a broad subject, um, lots of that involved giving people LSD without their knowledge to see what they'd do. Uh, some people died as a result, not from poisoning from LSD itself, but you know by accidentally killing themselves or basically completely out of it because they were tripping um, from all the LSD they were given. Um, there are lots of similar experiments to that where they would put people in, like the Stanford Prison Experiment, which isn't really part of MK Ultra, but they put lots of people in a fake prison, and they told half the people they'd be guards, half the people they'd be prisoners. As the experiment went on, the guards were abusing more and more of their power, and the experiment actually had to be stopped because it was getting far too serious and out of control. So, what you can learn from the real life sort of psychological experiments that have been carried out. Um, as well as all the you know other tests on humans using them as guinea pigs of different kind of chemicals and things like that, is that it's not far fetched at all that you'd actually lock people in a sort of supposed nuclear bunker and expose them to all sorts of you know horrible chemicals. If you look at the history of the United States, Britain, quite a lot of the world superpowers, um, they've all done horrible, horrible things where people have been exposed to stuff without their knowledge, or only you know partially to their knowledge, to actually just kind of document what happens to them. So, yeah, weirdly enough, all the crazy vault tech experiments done on people were not all that crazy at all. Okay, and now we come on to the subject of radioactive quackery. So, I've done a video talking about this before, but this is always a really fascinating and weird subject. Um, people on purposely irradiating themselves because they thought it was healthy. So, in the Fallout games, you're probably aware there's things like Nuka Cola, products that contain radiation, because why wouldn't a product contain radiation? But seriously, nobody did that in real life, but actually they did. So, what the radioactive quackery period was, it was mostly in the 1920s to 30s in America, and it was where different companies made products that contained radioactive isotopes or whatever, because they thought that was good. You know, putting irradiated substance in, is it, in your body was good, apparently. Obviously it wasn't. Um, so there was one device that added radiation to drinking water, so, you know, why most people would probably want to filter their drinking water and make it as sterile and clean as possible. No, there was one company that thought putting radiation in your drinking water was good for you. So what ended up actually happening was lots of people bought these devices, irradiated their own drinking water, and then of course they're drinking this water that contains radiation, and then they die horribly from it. So there was one apparently US businessman who was obsessed with putting this in his drinking water, and there's a quote that says something like, he was healthy until his jaw fell off. And apparently this guy, they had to actually bury him in a lead coffin because his body, upon his death, was just so radioactive from all this irradiated water he'd been drinking for years that, um, you know, it wasn't safe to just bury him normally. So, yeah, he had to go into um, just, you know, a completely lead-lined coffin so they could bury him safely. So, you know, crazy stuff like that. And there was lots of other products, there were things like radioactive suppositories, you know, if you decided you wanted to stick something radioactive up your ass for some reason. Radioactive condoms, I guess if you wanted your dick to fall off. Um, you know, and lots of other types of radioactive food, radioactive bath salts. It was absolutely crazy. We obviously now know that the more you're exposed to radiation, the more risks you have of cancer and everything else. But apparently back then they just thought it was cool to stick radiation in various things. So... You know, the idea that there was a brand called Nuka-Cola that made radioactive cola is not far-fetched at all, sadly. That actually, again, did really happen. So, in sort of conclusion with the Fallout games, you've got lots and lots of things in them that seem completely crazy, and of course, yes, most of the entire idea of huge mutated animals, I know in Fallout they say part of that is due to the forced evolutionary virus or FEV, um, not just the radiation. But the idea, you know, that you've got huge mutated animals due to radiation, that, that's obviously far-fetched. And lots of other aspects of the Fallout games are far-fetched because they're games and they're meant to be fun and not meant to be taken too seriously. However, some of the stuff in the Fallout games that you'd think is incredibly disturbing and strange actually ended up really happening. And that's the really fascinating things I think with the Fallout games is that they actually tread the line between reality and fiction quite 
you know, oddly at times, and in ways that's very interesting. So yeah, um, you can get nuclear bombs that were completely ridiculous and downsized, um, like, you know, man portable nuclear rockets, that was a thing. You know, there was crazy human experiments carried out on people by the US government at one point under Project MKUltra and others, that was a thing. And of course, products that on purposely contained radiation so you could irradiate yourselves was a thing. And I'm sure if I was to go deeper, there's lots of other little jokes in the Fallout universe and things like that that all contain um, references to real life crazy stuff that actually happened. So thanks for listening to the video. Um, I hope you found it interesting. But yeah, you'd be surprised at the depth of some of the stuff in the Fallout games actually being real.